Hello everybody, good afternoon. Hello. We're pleased to be welcoming uh, Brogan Tate to our Instagram live today. Um, I'm sure many of you are aware of Brogan. Hello Brogan, we will just get you in now. Hello. Hello. Hi. This is the first time I've done this in the. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Hopefully, connection doesn't let us down because sometimes it can get a, a bit jittery when it's two of us. Yeah. Hopefully not. My internet <laughs> isn't the best, but um, I think it should be okay. But it's so nice to see you. Thank you for I, having me. I know. It's, thanks so much for taking the time to uh, join us. I know you're quite busy, so. Um, yeah, so I'm sure you have many tales to tell because you've been in the game for quite a long time now, haven't you? Do you know what, Sophie? We're coming up to my 10-year anniversary next year. So a wow. decade of being in the influencer space, I guess, uh, being a content creator. I started in 2011 when I was 17. Wow. So Yeah, God. Yeah. I, I mean, many of the years that you've worked, we've worked with you as well. Like, you were probably one of the first kind of content creators we worked with on the spa side. Wow, that's um, amazing. So, yeah, we go back quite a long way now, don't mm -hmm. we? <laughs> we do, yeah, yeah. It's been amazing. I was trying to remember, like, all the things that sort of I've done over the years and how I've transitioned, because I just think everyone that works in this world has had very different journeys. Mm. And, um, and for me, I honestly didn't, envision it would actually be my full-time job eventually I loved it so much and was so happy with it being this tiny little bubble yeah. this corner of the internet I was so passionate about sort of um creating content and having a community of people and I still am that still is something I love so much but mm -hmm. the fact it's grown the way it has the things I've been able to do um, and the fact I've been able to make my channel my channel my full-time job now is just amazing so yeah <laughs> 10, 10 years nearly wow so why don't we go back 10 years then right mm. to the very beginning do you want to tell us a little bit about your journey and kind of how you started mm, yeah sure so yeah I was 17 I was at college doing my A-levels did not know what I wanted to do with my life I just knew that I didn't want to go to university I was really happy sort of working and establishing a, a career and uh, I started YouTube at a time where I was actually quite lonely and I was doing my A-levels I was living at home my long-term boyfriend at the time was away and uh, I was really craving sort of that that friendship and that community that YouTube was able to give me and I'd make videos about sort of what was in my school bag and my favorite <laughs> books I was reading and I learned so much I think I forget how much YouTube sort of helped me as a person mm -hmm. I learned all about makeup and how to um, make my curly hair look nice and um, how to style clothes I really enjoyed wearing. So it was just such an amazing platform place to sort of come onto. I grew up with social media, obviously. So I grew up with, you know, the Bebo and, and I made my own oh, websites yeah. and, you know, all of that. So it was such an exciting time. So yeah, and then over the years, I have always sort of carried on filming and documenting and sharing things. I studied photography, so I always had a real interest in cameras. Um, Re re found it really exciting but weirdly I was I really lacked confidence at school I wasn't into sort of drama and I always was behind the camera I never yeah. thought I'd end up sort of being so prominent in front of one um and then yeah so I sort of you know transitioned into life into adulthood and I shared all that journey so from being a teenager to going into my first jobs and talking about that at one point I was juggling two or three different jobs and I was sharing that and mm. then I started weekly blogging in, I think it was 2015 when I was 21, which is where I started actually sort of documenting daily life and sharing it once a week. And the amazing community I built is something I'll never forget. Like the people that would tune in every single week and be with me and watch me sort of grow up um, was just so nice. So, so yeah, and then I've been doing those weekly blogs, I've been on travels, and I actually did go down the career route at one point. Um, really just didn't think that. I've never ever grown massively. I've never blown mm -hmm. up. My channel's never had like massive views or massive amount of subscribers. So um, yeah, I always just sort of thought, okay, I'll, I'll see what I like. And I tried, I was an administrator. I worked in a shop, I did retail. I worked um, in social Yeah. 
Um, so I have <laughs> been that side too. So, uh, so yeah, I went down that route and I loved it. And then at one point, uh, an opportunity got presented to me where a local company were looking for someone to freelance and help them with s some social oh. media. So I basically took that opportunity because I thought, okay, I can spend like 20 hours a week doing that and then 20 hours a week roughly you know what it's like when you're self-employed yeah. <laughs> um to to do my my youtube channel and i was really happy with that balance and i thought that was mm. it and then um about two three years ago i the the company actually asked if i'd like to come as a full-time employee because you know obviously i was so busy doing so much for them and i just thought on oh, if i don't try now i'll never know i'll never know if i could do it so yeah. i don't know what was what made me want to but i basically took my youtube and blog and everything this <laughs> full time um i think it was what would it have been 2017 mm -hmm. i think yeah probably. um and here we are now so wow. yeah it's been a, Amazing. Been a ride <laughs> And all those things that you've done and all those role, uh, roles that you've done, you it, it all feeds into what you're doing now anyway, doesn't it? And it kind of helps mm. you kind of grow your brand in a way, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, mm. absolutely. I learned so much at every job I did. I have no regrets um, uh, because every job, every manager, every um, colleague I had taught me so much. Um, you know, I've worked for really big companies in the social media teams and dealt with so many big things together as teams and I've learned what I've really liked and what yeah. I've not liked so much so um and yeah I learned a lot about sort of self-discipline and being my own boss and what it takes to sort of essentially run a business is what I'm doing yeah. sometimes I sort of forget that that is what this is um because it just still feels like such an amazing hobby as well so yeah yeah it's crazy it is crazy like when I look back and people especially when I meet new people and they say what are you yeah. doing I don't even know where to start <laughs> <laughs> so when you start reeling off your journey and you're like wow actually I've done quite a lot <laughs> crazy yeah yeah uh, so over that period of time then have you kind of noticed much of a change in kind of the content creator influencer space has there been a big change from when you first started Oh, totally. Yeah. The fact that we're even here discussing it is uh, crazy. Um, it started out just so small and I think no one knew how much it would grow. And I yeah. think people underestimated sort of how big it could get. Um, and we saw the rise of sort of Zoe, uh, Zoella and YouTubers, but not just YouTube. I think influencers and content creators come in so many different shapes now. So you've got sort of the writers and the podcasters and the photographers and uh, models now. And there's just so many people mm. that are building businesses and careers from putting their life online or sharing their, their work, artists, creators in all sorts of shapes and sizes yeah. and ways. So yeah, it's, um, it's changed so much in the sense that it's just it's such a big industry now and there's so much growth and it's still growing so much um but yeah th yeah it's been a lot of change i just never yeah. never saw it i think especially when you sort of grow up and there's only sort of one view of career opportunities you know you only sort of know yeah. the the traditional job routes um so it's quite exciting to be part of an industry that is forever evolving regularly yeah. so yeah would you say kind of the changes have been for the better or have some been for the worse I would say change is always good, actually. Like, I do think it has been good for everyone. Um, with every job and every industry, there's always going to be pros and cons. Mm. Um, I think that works for both the creator side, the audience, the brand side, whatever. Um, because, you know, that is just the nature of things. Um, I, I, you know, a lot of it is highlight reels, as we know, and mm -hmm. sort of just documenting the good. And I think it's it's really great that we have so much choice now of creators to, um, you know, follow. And there's so much, so many different industries. So like you could, you know, the fitness, the amazing stuff you can learn about fitness now. Like I don't feel intimidated going to the gym because I know I can sort of follow that fitness blogger who shares those tips. Or, you know, I wasn't very good at cooking and there's like recipes available just all at your fingertips and these people creating this amazing content. So, and you know, you could like, knitting or um, yeah, exactly whatever yeah there's like a there's a creator that will be there to do that yeah, so love it. Yeah. yeah i think it's been i think it's been good there's been some things like i've not uh, you know like the rise in sort of um like fake followers and buying followers and things like that yeah. that's been quite difficult for people putting sort of a bad name on creators that genuinely love it and do this and mm -hmm. have built up years and years and years and years of um hard work for it so 
yeah, there's some there's some things that go on sort of behind the scenes that um, are frustrating, but you know, it's, it's the same in every every yeah. industry. Yeah, and you know what people, I know especially kind of on the PR side and brand side of things, people are starting to be able to kind of spot maybe the, the grey areas and, and mm. able to, they're more aware of it now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, over the years, so you've, okay. you've obviously experienced a lot of things. So what I want to know is kind of what's been your biggest highlight, your biggest thing that you've achieved or experience you've had in the past that's a good question. Um, wow, there's been so many amazing things. I think firstly, the fact I've been able to make this my actual career. Yeah. The the day that my accountant told me that I'd matched my old salary as a marketing manager was just mind blowing to me. I couldn't believe that I'd been able to do that, be able mm-hmm. to be my own boss and, and be part of an amazing industry. So the fact, yeah, I've made it my career. Um, the lifestyle and the opportunities that come with being creator are insane like I said to my mom years and years and years ago if I can travel with this that would be amazing because for me it wasn't necessarily about you know certain money goals or uh, uh, follower goals or anything like that it was just amazing that I got to sort of do what I loved every day (laughs) and uh, I remember my first press trip was I went to Milan um, with a company called Huawei um, Mm -hmm. who they were promoting watches and I just Honestly, the whole trip was a pinch me moment. And then I think not long after that, we worked together because Sparky, our company, sent me to Gran Canaria. Ah. And I got to go with my best friend, Megan, who's still one of my best friends now. And the fact that I can take my friends, my boyfriend and my family away but tr- to travel is probably my personal biggest mm-hmm. sort of highlight. Um, because to me, that's what brings me so much joy. I love the ability to be able to try new things. Like... I do a lot of my own trips that I document, but you know, even the beginning of this year, Benji and I were able to go on a cruise in the Caribbean, which was just Mm -hmm. mind blowing. Um, We've been able to ski. I've gone on sailing trips, um, theme park holidays. Like it's insane. Um, So when, yeah, those sort of opportunities where I can go and travel and see new things, that's really where I feel like, wow, this is amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, to create memories while you're working at the same time, you know, it's not really working, is it? It's just a brilliant, brilliant (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. So um, you use quite a lot of, um, or pretty much all the social channels, don't you? Do you have a favourite? Are you allowed to have a (laughs) favourite? Um, It sometimes changes. It really depends what mood I'm in, actually. Uh, I... I do gravitate towards loving Instagram. I think I spend a lot of time on Instagram. Uh, I love photography and I love chatting on stories. I love how instant it is. I've never taken my Instagram too seriously. Like a lot of my photos, in fact, I'd say like 90% of them are actually taken sort of in the moment or that day. I don't use too many filters or edit them heavily or anything like that. I really have always sort of treated it sort of like a a diary. So you documenting so many things that have been going on. You flip through my feed and you can just see all these like fun things. Um, So I do love that aspect. And the the community side, I feel like I really get to chat to people. And my DMs are filled every day with amazing conversations with uh, mostly other women and business owners and um, just just other girls that are just like me and they like the same things I like and we relate to each other. So I just feel like that's something so special that um, I love the most, but um, I do love YouTube. I love creating video content. I love working on a video, having a vision for it, sitting down and editing it, finding the music, seeing it come together and then putting that out into the world and then people sort of replying and letting me know what they think that's also something quite quite cool so yeah youtube and instagram take favor but um i like trying anything new i I, you know i love pinterest although i don't use it enough i think tiktok is amazing i just love it as a consumer the black hole you get lost in it don't you (laughs) i love it i love it i think it's great so much fun positive good vibes over there um so i like that but as a creator i find it hard to sort of keep up with them all um it does get a little bit overwhelming sort of trying to do everything especially now instagram have reels stories igtv there's just sort of quite a lot so you have to figure out sort of where you find your feet and what sort of works but um Yeah. yeah Yeah, oh, I think with like YouTube, for example, when you kind of create your videos, there's so much that goes into it, and it takes quite a lot of time, doesn't it? So you know, having to balance everything 
in your home office because you know that's where you are that's where we all are at the moment yeah <laughs> it's it's quite a lot isn't it so do you, how do you manage that balance between kind of work and life home life I guess how do you switch off good question yeah I think a lot of people will probably be trying to do that at the moment um yeah. because I started working from home when I was living in a flat and I remember I found that really quite difficult because I was sort of um living working eating sleeping socializing all in the same quite small space um so I had to sort of find balance in terms of um you know I'd go to the gym and I'd make um time to see friends but obviously this year in particular none of that has been possible so trying to balance home and work life um is something that I think I've had to adapt to um yeah. as the months go on so at the beginning of the year the first lockdown I found sort of having a routine really good for me. So getting up at the same time, getting dressed, making the bed, those like little things mm -hmm. um, and keeping my workspace for work and my sort of relaxing space separate because I think it's very easy for me to grab my laptop and sit on the sofa, which I'm yeah. guilty of. Um, so yeah, I loved having those routines. And then I got a dog in June and she oh. sort of helped shape that routine because we went and did the same walk at the same time, the same days. Um, but now actually more recently, I've actually just been letting go of the pressure to sort of try too hard and just mm -hmm. take each day as it comes so I'll look at my week as a whole I'll sort of plot out what which days I want to do which thing and even like on Monday no I think it was Tuesday I had too many things in my diary I just I actually overfilled it so I said to one of the people I was meant to be doing the meeting with do you mind if we move it to Friday I've got more time then yeah. I really want to give you my time I don't want to be rushed like I don't want to feel stressed with everything I like overload myself so yeah I look at the week as a whole and then each day as it comes I sort of plan out where I want to do things and how I want it to be but yeah I, I get uh I get too easily distracted with doing work stuff and then home stuff like yeah. uh, I'm going to visit a chiropractor this afternoon because I've got really bad back mm -hmm. and that's at three o'clock so I'm sort of trying to work out okay so I'm here now yeah I'll do a bit of work before then then I've got that appointment then I need to get some food and it's you know what I mean it's sort of just trying to juggle things but I can't even imagine how people do it with like big families and children and oh loads of pets and stuff I just I, I take my hat off to people that are sort of juggling that because yeah, yeah it can be hard yeah I mean me too I mean if, I mean you've got a dog and I've, I've got a cat and the cat doesn't need walking but even that <laughs> I schedule my life around her yeah um, I, I'm a crazy cat mum though so um <laughs> do you miss working in the office with all the team and stuff oh, yeah I mean we will be going back to the office kind of three days a week as we were before kind of lockdown mm -hmm. um but there is nothing like working in an office in a PR team because it's so collaborative we have to be talking all the time and it's mm -hmm. so nice to be able to share ideas and just kind of say it out loud rather than across the screen yeah um yeah. so yeah really looking forward to getting back in the office when we can hopefully end of next week um but who knows yeah and that ability um, to sort of go to work and do the work yeah. and then leave it there and come home and have that separate physical yeah. space I think is absolutely yeah, yeah I mean I'm quite lucky in the fact that I have kind of my own office space at home I mean not at the moment because I'm in the middle of moving house so I'm kind oh, of wow. in between houses so everything's very unsettled wow. but um I'm very good at having my space and I work from home quite a lot anyway but mm -hmm. um I think in terms of collaboration and team wise like oh nothing like an office for sure yeah yeah I really miss sort of like meetings I'd have like physically in person with PRs yeah. and going going for a drink and going into London and like physically seeing people um yeah. so I think it inspires you and motivates you more once you like bounce off of someone else and you see that yeah. other person and you see the energy that they bring and you just sort of like keep want to keep going yeah. so yeah really miss that interaction I didn't yeah. I didn't think I was missing it until sort of recently so yeah yeah definitely like big events and stuff it's it, we haven't mm. been able to do face-to-face -face events we've done virtual events that we did one yesterday that you you, you joined did, us yeah. but um you know it's it's not it's not the same is it um and yeah we're looking forward to being able to do some more of that next year hopefully fingers crossed mm. um mm. but yeah i mean you mentioned travel being such a big thing and none of us unfortunately really have been able to do much this year have we so do you have anything in your diary next year or what are you most looking forward to uh i do have some things um benj and i have a personal holiday where we're meant to be going to walt disney world in florida Ooh. um we were meant to go in october um and so it's been moved to a end of april next year but mm -hmm. honestly we obviously wouldn't even consider it unless it was sort of the right time and it was safe cool. to go and do so 
Um, but other than that, no other travel plans or trips right now. I just don't see the point in booking anything at the moment. Um, but I really am looking forward to being able to travel again. Yeah. Travel is just such a big part of my life and who I am and the content I create as well. And uh, yeah, I just really, I, I can't wait that buzzy feeling like pulling your suitcase through the airport oh, like, uh, and getting on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> I just love it so much. So, um, but yeah, like, yeah, no other sort of um, holidays or travels. I, I get to work with lots of different um, travel c companies um, and they're all working on some really exciting things. So uh, yeah, I'm really hopeful for them in the travel industry. And I know it's had such a huge impact on so many yeah. people um so yeah i think thinking of anybody that's had to like sort of go through any of that because it's really really tough and people that have like lost their jobs and mm. you know people that work in entertainment industries and and, and the travel industries hit just so bad so um yeah I, I i've got friends that you know are one's an air hostess and my brother actually works all over the country and the world as well so yeah it's it's just such a shame so fingers crossed for everyone that we can um bring it all back <laughs> yeah absolutely is there anything else that you're kind of looking forward to in the next year do you have any plans up your sleeve or anything you can tell us i am working on a project with one of my best friends bianca which is top secret for now um we're hoping to launch that in january so yeah that's something you can keep your eyes peeled for we're really excited about it so that's cool. it's something i've never done before so it's like quite new for me Ooh. um so that's nice yeah sort of trying Putting, putting my fingers in lots of different pies <laughs> um, nice. so that would be cool hopefully get to travel again and then um, hopefully be able to do events and stuff as well and speaking opportunities I've really enjoyed sort of um, working with brands and going to their offices and speaking on panels I did a lot of that last year so I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to all of that and then on a personal level just I've got everything that was booked for 2020 is pushed into 2021 so we benji and i my boyfriend we were looking at the uh the calendar together and we have stuff in like every weekend in about march april time so we've wow. got like a lot of theater shows that got changed dates and we've got weddings uh, i've got hen do like things like that i'm sort of really hopeful that those things are be are able to happen safely and you know yeah. within their regions but yeah we'll see i'm i'm hopeful it'll not ne nothing will ever be back to normal but i'm hopeful we can start doing those sort of things yeah. again um, yeah. especially for my friends that are due to get married as well i know it's just yeah yeah things for us <laughs> yeah oh, it's gonna so, yeah. be a busy busy year i think for everyone in terms of all the weddings and stuff i know there's a few that have been moved for me for next year so it's gonna be uh it's gonna be fun yeah. it's gonna be yeah. a of partying hopefully it's got you never know yeah anything. hopefully <laughs> but, yeah oh it's been so nice chatting to you brogan thank you for joining us Thank you so much for having me. It's so nice to chat to you and see your face and um, yeah. excited to see what you guys are up to next year. Have you guys got good plans, big things going on or? Yeah, we've got um, we've got a new spa launching next year, which will be really fun. Um, and a few other secret things that we can't mm -hmm. really talk about yet, but we'll let you know. Um, Amazing. Obviously, like, Maval is going really well. We've got um, some nice cool collections and a new shop opening. So, yeah, it's it's going well. And it's it's, it's really nice to kind of work um, with such a collaborative team and be so creative during this time. Because I think mm. when you are at home, it can be so easy to just kind of go into your little hole. Yeah. Can't it? And then you get a bit... Um, a bit lost in yourself but um yeah but yeah, yeah it's great it's really nice to see how everyone's adapting as well and it's um there's a lot of innovation happening at the moment and it's brilliant to see especially in the spa industry oh uh, yeah i so enjoyed really yesterday cool. for anyone that didn't know we, we painted our nails we virtually in a workshop <laughs> and with mavala it was so fun so yeah really um so um it, it inspired by so many brands doing so many things with yeah. the with the limits they have um so yeah really cool so i yeah. wish you all the best with all of those things thank you very much out. and <laughs> thanks everyone for watching um i'll be back on live tomorrow with tracy we'll be doing a spa pr marketing clinic um so do tune in tomorrow at nine um and we'll be back next thursday um doing another interview so do join us again and thanks again brogan it was great to chat and hopefully see you in person soon yeah thank you so much for having me see you soon all right bye, bye. <laughs>